Hi everyone, good morning. It is Monday morning and this episode is a week late. But don't worry, I'm going to upload two to make up for it. And I realized as of this morning that this will be my 90th episode that I've ever posted on Spotify. So that is very exciting. I think I definitely have posted more than 90 in general with the series, but officially on Spotify as an actual podcast, it's been 90 episodes. With that being said, please, please continue to send me your ideas. It's been really helpful actually getting ideas from friends and family members. Weirdly enough, this episode came up because I've been having a lot of people come up to me or I just ran- randomly stumble into this conversation topic where we start talking about not really knowing where to go, what direction to choose in terms of life path, passions, career, whatever. And then people are like, I just either have so many options, they don't know what to do, or they're like, I don't know how to differentiate myself. I feel like everyone else. And once I start doing anything, I feel like somebody else has already done it, which is super valid and something I've definitely felt before and then there's also people who are like I just don't know where to start and I just feel so overwhelmed and I just stop myself before I even get started after having that conversation like literally like four or five times in the past month I was like okay okay I get it world I get it whatever is out there I'll do an episode about this because I don't know why I keep talking about it at the end of the day I haven't figured it out myself. I'm all over the place, guys. You can already tell. I'm tattooing. I have a podcast. I do vlogs. I have my full-time corporate job. They're very, very, very different. Um, I am the perfect example of somebody who doesn't really have a direction. But at the same time, I'm also a perfect example of somebody who is actively trying to find their direction their pathway and to stick to one and so because I'm more of in the middle and not somebody who has completely figured it out I feel like this might be really helpful because sometimes when you're getting advice from somebody who's already made it there they like to simplify it which is really sweet because then it seems very easy but they leave out a lot of details that you know it would be nice to know And yeah, I just want everybody to figure out what they want to do, whether it is something that is well-respected in society or not. It doesn't matter to me. Whatever it is that you care about that is made for you, I want you all to do it, to do the thing. And so that's what this episode's for. Obviously, I'm not going to get into it because I always do a high-low buffalo. So starting with the high, (laughs) why did I write this? Okay, I basically figured out how to cook chicken breast so that it isn't dry. And TLDR, the way you do it is you add oil and you use half and half cream. So I use those two together and I am very careful about how long I, you know, cook the chicken for until it's like right where it's like undercooked. And then right when it switches to cooked, I stop the stove so that it doesn't cook anymore. I figured out how to do it and it's been awesome because I don't really have time to cook full-on meals and so cooking chicken breast has been like a five-minute meal for me. It was so funny because I figured it out coming back from tattooing and I just remembered like two weeks ago it was like 10 30 p.m at night and I was like I need to eat dinner and I'm like cooking my chicken breast and I just had like this existential, not crisis, but like I just had like an existential moment where I just like saw myself cooking this chicken at 10.30 p.m. And I was like, what the hell am I doing right now? Like I feel so confused about the state of my life. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a high, but the high part is that I figured it out. And now I have a quick meal fix if you guys have also quick meal ideas where you can get like a lot of protein in please let me know because i think the quick part is the difficult part for me next is with my low i had the worst travel day i'm not in new york anymore obviously you can tell from like the whole cottage 
older aesthetic of my background, which always is the case when I'm back at home. It might be nostalgic for some of you guys if you guys have been following me for a while, but I'm back home and I had to travel here from New York to LA. I always do this full travel day. I take off work just to do it. And then this time around, it was so annoying. I think I'm just tired of it. I think I'm tired of traveling this year. This sounds so pretentious, so stuck up, like so privileged of me, whatever you want to use, use all the words. And I think I realized it this time because I just could not stand the small little things that normally I'm like, uh, whatever. First flight that I was on. So I was in the plane and they were like, oh, by the way, we can't land in the next two hours because there's a hole on the airplane runway and they need to patch it up. And it's the only runway that they have at this airport because it was a really small one. And I was like, two hours in the sky and we just flew here five hours. It ended up taking them 30 minutes to actually patch it up. So it wasn't that bad. And then the second flight got delayed by an hour, two hours because some bird like shit in the engine, which is insane that just one bird can just stop an entire plane of like a hundred something people. Not a hundred. Is that, I don't even know how many people are actually on a plane. Is it a hundred? No, that sounds a little bit too ambitious. I think like 50 people are usually on a plane. This is a pretty big plane. I want to say 50, but yeah. Moving on to the Buffalo. So I don't know if you guys have this experience too, where like when you guys talk to your parents, it's like almost like, not that they're bipolar, but they're just opinions just switch up so fast depending on what media they've been consuming or who they've been talking to. And so they have like very different drastic opinions or things that they want to tell you for that day. And so because I call my parents often, this switch up happens a lot to me. So where some days, especially, and it's so weird because it's on the days where I do not want to hear a certain thing, where I hear the thing that I didn't want to hear. Some days I'm tattooing and I'm exhausted. Like I'm done with my life. I'm so tired. I just want to go home. And I'm like on the brink of just mentally breaking down in the middle of the streets of New York. But I still have two blocks to go to get to my house. So (laughs) And I call my parents and I always get like the talk about making more money and how I need to try to keep making more money and saving the money and investing the money and don't spend the money when you don't have to spend the money. And like I have that conversation and I'm like, I do not need to hear this right now. I already worked my ass off today to get this money. I'm proud of myself. I do not need to do more than I need to do. And I know how to handle my money. Thank you. I have those days. And then in between those days, I'll call my family on the days where I'm like feeling fine. And they'll be like, you know, you should relax. You should chill. Like, don't worry about it. Take time off. Like, don't push yourself too hard. Like, life isn't all about money. And I'm like, where were you? the other day when I was dying where was this conversation and so I have these like back and forths and it's driving me crazy and then a new one has been unlocked introduced since I came home where I was lectured for I'm not kidding guys I was lectured for 30 minutes from my mom where she was telling me how I need to take one day to tattoo in the week And then Sundays, or just one day out of the week, to date. She was being legit serious, guys. She had a lecture, like, planned. She gave me examples of how I could turn out, like, what kind of old lady I would be if I didn't have a person. She gave examples, like, person A versus person B. If you're person A with a husband, you'd be much happier. And then the other, which is person B, they're doing this and this and this because they don't have a husband. And then she said that my quality is diminishing, so I got to be on top of it. I'm not going to be young and, you know, available forever, which is so true. It's crazy how much they switch it up. So that's the weird thing. I don't know if your parents do the same thing where they just kind of have very drastic opinions depending on the day that you talk to them. 
let me know because it would be nice to know that i'm not alone (laughs) in this but anyways let's move on to the episode Okay, guys, okay, before I get into the episode, I want to specify what I mean when I say helping you find direction, how to start on your path to success. I mean start, and I don't mean finding the thing that makes you a billionaire, that makes you more successful than majority of the people in this planet. I just mean, how do you get started on your path that is meant for you so that you're not all over the place and you never ever get to that niche thing or that special thing that you can provide to everybody because the hardest part is getting started. And if you never really get started, you end up realizing really, really long down the line that you messed up when you're 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever, whenever point that you realize that, hey, I have messed up and I actually have been doing things that other people have been telling me to do or I've been following this path that has been the easy route and it's not actually what I want to do. Once you realize that, the time that it took beforehand for you to figure that out, it's not completely wasted because you learned a lot from it But at the same time, you cannot get that time back. And so you can start over from the point that you are at. But I really hope that you guys find this video or get to that realization sooner than later. And so this is how to get started. The first is how do you avoid decision, planning, choice, fatigue? This is a big thing that happens. I think a lot of people, rightfully so, Before you even start doing anything, you start panicking and like overthinking and thinking, should I do this? Like, is this the right thing to do? Like, what are the stakes? And you start doing a pros and cons list and like, what are the risks of doing this thing? Okay. I understand how valuable that can be, but most of the time you're going to get in your own way. And this is going to be hard for a lot of people to hear, especially when you guys have kids and you have other priorities in your life and like dependencies. But still, at the end of the day, you're not going to get started if you keep boggling down on the dependencies. And so you just got to choose one thing. Choose one thing and then figure out a way to commit to it to the point where you cannot get out. So this will make a lot of sense in one second. When you choose a thing... There's three parts of how to decide what to choose. It needs to be something that sits at the intersection of three things. Something that you love doing, something that you're good at, and something that is needed, wanted by other people. That people or people, animals, whatever. You're providing some kind of service, product, whatever it is. It needs to provide some kind of value to somebody. And sometimes... It doesn't have to be very clear that they need it. For example, we didn't know that we needed cars, right? That cars would be the thing that would help us transport ourselves from A to B. We couldn't imagine it. And it's been a super valuable tool. That's why I'm saying if you know that it can provide value, but somebody cannot tell you exactly that that's the thing that they want, that still qualifies as the what's wanted, what's valuable to other people. And a little bit more of the details about the three things. So what you love. In this case, because the focus is getting you started, you don't need to choose something that you are extremely passionate about. Like if you feel like you need to find the life calling. No, 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 no. The point of this point here of finding what you love is just finding something you just like doing what have you done when you're a little kid xyz you might have played soccer or you used to draw a lot whatever it is something that you just love doing no biggie something you like to you find yourself doing on your free time and i say this because when you choose something that you are extremely in love with and that you are 
like that you treat like your baby, it makes it really hard to go forward because you're going to get really easily hurt when things don't go right. You're going to attach your self-worth to that thing because you care about it too much and you're going to take too much control over how it unfolds but a huge part of following your life path is letting the world do its thing do its magic and take you where you're supposed to be even though you yourself don't really know how to articulate what you want and where you need to be because you don't know you don't know and so choosing something that's good enough lets you have more room to fail and it also prevents you from just freezing because I feel like if you care about it too much you're going to overthink it and whenever we overthink we just spend too much time thinking rather than actually doing something the next thing is what you're good at so a huge part of this is not choosing the thing that you're good at based on what people think is cool or respectable so if you think something that you're really good at is freaking pole dancing then hell yeah that is your thing that you're really good at. If you feel like the good, the thing that you're really good at is horse riding, then yeah, that is your thing. Whatever it is, try to tune out the external voices of society saying, no, you need to be good at math and finances and taxes and law and whatever, like healthcare. Just turn that talk off and then think about for yourself, what have you just been naturally good at? And it could be something really abstract too. It could be like, I'm just really good at organizing things and planning things. That is something that I, like a lot of people wouldn't be like, oh, what a cool thing. Like I'm just really type A and I'm really good at putting a timestamp and like putting things into calendars and timelines. That's just something I'm really, really good at. I embrace it. And so in the same way, finding out what that thing is for you. And then finally, it's what is valuable. It doesn't need to be groundbreaking. It doesn't need to be something that's never been done before. You do not have to be the first person to do this thing. It doesn't need to like blow off the pants of everybody who hears about it. Those are the little specifics that I want to say about each thing. Because I think the intersection point of what you love, what you're good at, and what is valuable to the world that has been said a million times i if you are really into self-help you've probably heard of that type of model for choosing what you're supposed to do in life but i think in this case to actually get you started and to get the ball rolling there's a few little side things i want to say about each one and so once you find the intersection of those three things that should be the thing that you do and that should be the most thinking that I feel like you should be doing besides how can I get started. So getting started is the next part. So once you choose the thing, how do you get started? You have to lock yourself in. If you guys are anything like me, which I'm sure you guys all are, this is not a unique thing where you guys overthink your decisions and that keeps you from actually doing the thing. You need to do something to lock you in, whether that is giving somebody a lot of money so that you have to get started or giving somebody something that is extremely valuable to you. You cannot have it back until you really get into the weeds of things. Like You need to do something to that extent to lock yourself in. And so in this case, my example would be tattooing. And actually, tattooing works really well with choosing my life path example. So this is a real thing that I've done in my life. And this is the reason why I worked out. I've always loved drawing. And it's something I do on my free time. I also love working for myself. I love setting my own schedules. And also, something that I'm really good at is drawing. It just happens to be that I'm good at drawing. And I'm also really good at planning things and keeping organized. Something that is very valuable to the world is a certain tattoo style, which happens to be a tattoo style that aligns with the way that I draw. A doodle sketch style. And so 
at the intersection of all those things, I found tattooing. It is not something that is groundbreaking. My style of tattoo has been done by a lot of people and have been doing it for years. There's also not that much respect for the tattoo industry. Um, There's a lot of people still that see it as very weird, very niche. It's a creative field, so it's not as respected. Whatever. Something that I love. It is something that I do love, but it isn't. When I was younger, I didn't think, oh my god, if I don't become a tattooed artist, I did not fulfill my life's calling. Or my life's calling has just never been being a tattoo artist. I just, it's just something I love doing, something I'm good at, and something that's valuable. Bam. From there, how did I get started? So, locking myself in. I put down a deposit the day that I decided that I could be a tattoo artist and that I'd actually be pretty good at it. I put down $2,500 locked in. No matter what was going to happen in the next few months, I knew I was locked in. I had to make room. I had to make space for this thing. And I was going to because I was not going to lose 2.5K. And so that is how my tattoo career journey, whatever, got started. I get questions from people asking like, how did you even start this? This is so random. How did you know you were going to do this? Like, how did you know this was going to be your thing? But I was like, it wasn't ever going to be my thing. I just needed to start on something that gave me more hope, gave me kind of creativity and like inspiration in my life which is something that I was lacking severely. And just the thought and just the act of in putting money down, of like knowing that this was something I was going to spend some of my time doing, it just was enough. I didn't even care whether or not I did it well. And this is how I did it. And yeah, you don't need to put 2.5K, but you can put less money you can also give your laptop to somebody if you don't need it for this particular project that you're doing give them your laptop and be like hey if i don't if i don't start xyz by november 1st then you can keep my laptop you can keep the one thousand dollars whatever it is so you lock yourself in doing this as quickly as possible without overthinking it will you know, get yourself started on this path. Eventually, by starting somewhere, starting at all, you really train your body and your mind to take on risk, to do things that aren't very conventional, to not be very status quo. And the more you kind of like branch, so this is how I see it, right? I always do this, guys, you know, my analogies and my visuals. But if this is the path that the whole world sees as very respectable, um, going to college, finding a very respectable job in law, healthcare, engineering, STEM careers, having kids, getting married, whatever. And this is like the path, right? You starting off on what I've just recommended is like you slightly taking two steps away from that path. And so you're kind of deviating from the path, but only very slightly. So if this is the path, you're kind of going like this, but you have to just get started. And then eventually by practicing and like kind of easing your way into like being very unconventional and taking on these risks, you can take two steps at a time and go slightly away. So then it creates this like brand new path. And before you know it, in a few years or whatever, a few months, you're like, completely different you're a different person you have a different life path because you've just been slowly incrementally changing things and accepting risk in your life so that's the difference between i think what a lot of people say where they just tell you to find the thing and like just go for it and like make sure that thing is like super cool and like you have like all this pressure to like Make sure that it's this really cool thing that doesn't fail, that is unique, that is groundbreaking. And they want you to go from this path and like literally leap to a completely new path and then start here. That doesn't make sense. Like how the hell did you get from path A to path B when path B is in freaking Africa and you're in the US? Like 
you know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't really make logical sense when all of your life you've been told to do X, Y, Z. Your friends respect you and see you in a certain way because you've been doing X, Y, Z. Your whole social capital, your reputation is on the line. Yeah, of course you're going to be brainwashed into thinking this is the way that you're supposed to go. Eventually, one day you're going to wake up along that path and realize, oh my gosh, this is not what I want to do. Or you wake up and you ask yourself, is this it? I, and I already got there, guys. <laughs> I already got there because when I started my corporate job and I was a few months in, I was like, this is what people do for the next 30, 40, 50 years of their life. And I remember like asking myself almost every day, I was like, is this literally it? Like, this is it. I'm going to wake up in the morning, go to work at nine, sit on these meetings, listen to all this political corporate talk, get half the shit that I wanted to get done, done, because there's approvals and corporate things and political things going on. Go home, make my dinner, go to sleep. Hopefully find a partner, have kids in between there. I was like, no, 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 I can't. Like that, there's no way that that's it. Because I was already feeling that uncomfortableness at the age of 22. (laughs) And so I had to get out. And that's, this is how I did it. And if you even have a little semblance of like, if you feel that slightly, if you're getting kind of antsy hearing me talk about what I'm saying right now, you might be pushing down something. You might be pushing down the very feeling that I'm talking about. You might not be letting that thing out. And it only gets louder from here. It only gets bigger and more suppressing from here. So the sooner you figure it out, the better. Obviously, especially when you don't have as many dependencies, a family, like other things. If you've already been there and you have kids, you have a lot of dependencies, it's still not too late. I would say the intersection that you that I did mention before, I would add actually another category. And this is me just spewing. Now that I'm thinking about it, I would add what is the intersection of something you can do that doesn't create too much turmoil because you want to make that incremental change. So this is just a first step. You know deep down that this is not the true thing that you want to do. But to get started, like I said, something you can do that doesn't create too much havoc finally this is just a general list of like four or five things that will help along this entire like process something that really 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 helped me in particular is seeing someone do the thing that i ended up doing and i just copied them i met my tattoo artist that was doing one of my pieces for me she was from Can I share this? She worked at a very big, very well-paying corporate job. She ended up switching into tattoo. She did both at the same time. And then one year after switching to do tattoo, she quit her corporate job and she can fund her entire family with the tattoo business. Okay. Seeing her do that, hearing about her story, most people would be like, oh, it's already been done. So you can't do that again but no i actually saw it differently i said i saw someone who did the thing that i wanted to do i saw myself in her and i was like if you can do it i can do it and i started another thing that is super helpful is to start doing the thing with someone else and i say start doing the thing so this person will hold you accountable for starting not for continuing or completing that is the most important part because Whether or not your friend, your family member, XYZ person continues or not should not affect you. But it will be very helpful to start with somebody because it makes things less scary. It makes things more enjoyable. And after that, if they keep wanting to be held accountable and continue to do the work with you, then that will be really enjoyable and it's going to be awesome. But if they decide to drop off, you already got yourself started. Do not cut off the momentum because the hardest part was starting okay the next thing is 
you want to remove as much pressure in general from you starting. Whether it is planning, over planning, over thinking about the decision you're making, whatever it is you want to, this is just a general rule for this entire concept and podcast episode. Literally try to get as much friction and overthinking and barriers, all of those things, get them out of the way as soon as possible and as frequently as possible. And by the way, they always come up. So throughout the path, it's never just going to not come up anymore. You have to remember that you have to keep removing those barriers and removing the friction as you keep going. But the biggest barrier and the most amount of friction is at the beginning. Okay, and finally... I wrote down a tree analogy. I feel like everything that I end up talking about ends up being likened to a tree. But anyways, so this is a slightly different analogy than the path one. If the path one didn't work out for you or if you want to have another analogy for what I'm talking about. Basically, (laughs) how I see it is the trunk of the tree is, you know, how everyone starts off. The basic life path going to school then when you start doing this kind of method you branch off by creating this huge giant branch coming off of the trunk you might do this several times because you're you might be interested in multiple things you might find multiple things that meet at that intersection maybe you're somebody who is able and willing to do multiple things at once or maybe you try one of these things you get started with it and it doesn't work out and then you do this same process again and as you do this you're still building up yourself as a tree right so all of these things are still a part of you as you go off as you guys know from what a tree looks like the tree will branch off into tinier branches but those tinier branches you can't get to until you pass through the trunk and the bigger branches then you can finally get to the smaller branches. And those smaller branches bring out fruit that bring a lot of value and uniqueness and whatever it is, beauty. That is where you're trying to get to. So this video is trying to get you to get started on branching out from the trunk. The little small parts and the fruit that you bear is most of the times things that you did not expect which is why life is so special and so exciting. There's pathways, passions, impact that you would never have realized you would have gotten to and will get to. It's a far stretch to get to the fruit. To tell yourself going from the trunk to making a fruit is a huge jump. That's why I created this video because I feel like there's a lot of missing jargon and advice for the in-between i think there's just a lot of advice missing for the middle part like the hard parts of getting through life and succeeding i everyone always talks about the beginning everyone always talks about the end and most of the time the people that a lot of you guys will listen to and i listen to are the people who already made it and then they talk on their experience looking back on their journey but they miss a lot of the details like they don't analyze it enough to the point where it's that helpful they didn't give you enough information and they already made it so they kind of forgot the pain but anyways i'm going on tangent i don't know how i even got here but if you guys have any podcast episodes um serious or not serious especially not serious i feel like it's hard for me to talk about not serious things because i don't know if you guys want to listen to them and if you guys even care yeah so if you guys have any non-valuable just random topics that you guys want to hear let me know yeah don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you're listening on youtube especially subscribe please and If you're on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, don't forget to follow the podcast, rate the podcast, and share it with everybody, your mom, your dad, your dog, and yeah.